Good afternoon. I'm Tom Butcher here at the Zero Project Conference in Vienna. And uh, this afternoon, I'm welcoming online three people. I'm welcoming Luis Artieda, Claudia Pinhau, and Martin Suchel. And what we're going to talk about is the Cities for All initiative and what's going on in Amsterdam. So, why is Amsterdam using AI? Um, Luis, I'll ask you to distribute um, the, the answers around. So if you would ask your colleagues to answer it appropriately. Ooh, and just to say, we have got a very tight 15 minutes to get things going with. And just before the end, uh, I'm going to call upon my friend um, Petra, who is going to, who is a flip chartist, to show us the depiction of our conversation. So, without any more ado, over to you, Luis. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yes, I would like to ask Martin, um, mm -hmm. why is Aston are using AI? I yeah. Good, 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 good. I can definitely explain that. Um, like AI leads <laughs> for the city of Amsterdam, which which shows that we are. Uh, really taking this serious and of course the reason for this is that artificial intelligence is we believe going to be changing everything in society everything in the world uh, and we actually want to make sure this is a positive change for uh, our community but also of course at large in the, on the in the whole world um, so we're discovering experimenting with new techniques and seeing how we can use them responsible uh, and at the same time we're also thinking about the negative effects of this te uh, technology and making sure that we actually uh, well mitigate those um, so examples can be like using new types of scanners to map the streets of the city, um, which of course, with the topic we're talking about today, will uh, offer plentiful uh, opportunities. Um, but you can also think about uh, new ways of making our, our services to our citizens better uh, by using natural language processing and actually aiding uh, people in the communication with the city. Um, so we're here today together with uh, Lewis from World Enabled to actually share a bit of what we're actually planning on the side of accessibility using AI, combining the that advances in AI with the possibilities of using that for accessibility. So really uh, excited to be here. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Luis, um, anything more that we should add to the answer to that question? No, I think we, the only thing that I can add to that is we're so, uh, from War Enable, uh, uh, leading organization in the intersection of uh, urban development and accessibility, I'm the partnership director. Uh, we feel so proud to to develop this partnership with Amsterdam, and um, I think we can move on to the second question and in, 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 in elaborate a bit more on what we're doing. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I was I was going to get there, <laughs> which is um, why do you think it's important to use AI specifically in the context of city accessibility, and that's accessibility, which has you know all colors and, and ranges across so many different things. Yes, I think one of the important things here is um, the, the, the key concept of prioritizing citizens' needs to improve accessibility in the city. Um, from War Enable, we always believe innovation is very close closely tied to inclusion and access and accessibility. Um, we believe that innovation, because of the fact that you need to create outside of the box, include all types of personas, all types of needs, all types of priorities, which in this case, it can relate to persons with disabilities with, with, who have different needs. That leads us to be inclusive and to be accessible. When you truly innovate, when you truly for the needs and priorities of people, you are have to be inclusive and act and create accessible features. Um, and we, we see this example through history. Uh, a lot of the innovation in terms of technology have been developed with uh, persons with disabilities in mind, and then they get uh, transitioned to mainstream because they do help um, uh, they do help population at large and the general population, uh, such as the mouse. Uh, the uh, transcribe, um, read, optimizes, optimize, optimizing readers for, uh, for text that was, they were developed for persons with disabilities in mind, but, um, you know, general population can enjoy it. That's why we believe inclusion and accessibility as a uni universal 
uh, tenant that helps the general population, not only disabilities. Wonderful. And then the next question I'm going to throw open to the floor, I hope, and you can throw it open as well, is, is how are you using um, AI specifically to improve accessibility? And I, I think Claudia can respond to this and, and more yeah. about... I'm, I'm going to target a bit more how are we targeting users. Um, so first of all, I would like to say that I see it has, the city has two big user groups. One is the, uh, the citizens, uh, so in this case, people with disabilities that need their life enabled. And by enabled, I mean that they can independently go to work to the supermarkets that they go, can go vote, access to online services and so on. And then we have uh, civil servants that work for the urban department or for communications and they need to have the right information so they can act on it because they do have the power to act on it. Uh, me and Martin, we are part of the innovation department. So what we do is that we bring these important topics to the table and help to create uh, better and creative solutions. So when we got this topic, our opportunity question was how might we improve accessibility uh, in the city using AI? And we needed to have in consideration that, first of all, our focus is not the use of AI, but the cities and the uh, people with disabilities, uh, but also accessibility is such a broad topic. Uh, so we, uh, first of all, we decided to divide it uh, into three topics. So one uh, is venue accessibility, then pedestrian accessibility and readability. Uh, and for each topic, we are having different workshops with citizens and uh, civil servants to understand what are the problems they perceive, ideate together uh, about solutions and prioritize which are the solutions. Just to give an example, we have facilitated this workshop for venue accessibility and we got to know that, for instance, people in a wheelchair just to uh, decide uh, which restaurant to choose, they many times go online to, to check information and information is very scattered. That means that they are a long time searching for information and then they call, but they never know who is the person on the other side. So they can just say, yeah, I don't know or um, I don't have this information available. It's not accessible. Uh, and then even if they do know that possibly it's accessible, they don't know if it's for them, their specific needs. So they go there, they even go there to, uh, to, to verify if they can have just a pleasant evening with, with their family. And uh, yeah, all of this to, to say that we approach these topics as learners. So we want to be in a perspective of we know nothing and people with disabilities can tell us and be the experts of what are their needs. So uh, we believe that technology and AI should come to serve the needs of people. So the user comes first, and then technology serve, serves to help facilitate and enable life. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'm now going to ask a couple of questions that um, have come up from our discussion um, so far. One of them is um, innovation. Um, in solving problems, there's always got to be innovation. You have a tool which is AI, so that you have innovation in both solving the problems and innovation in the use of AI itself as a tool to solve the problem. Where do you and where have you found the innovations have come from? Have they come from the civil servants? Have they come from the discussions with the citizens? Have they come from the people who provide you with the AI facilities, the, the machine learning, the um, big data? I just really love to know what kind of intersectionality there is between those, shall we say, those three corpuses. Yeah, maybe I can I can answer that yes. one. Uh, of course, of course, all the technological advancements uh, in AI have been a huge opener of possibilities, so we can do much more new things. However, as, as Claudia also described, like from from talking to the people and knowing their needs, we are actually now diving into like what is required for uh, how can we use this new technology. 
Uh, so an example for for like if somebody instead of somebody having to go to a restaurant, uh, we're using tooling like uh, natural language processing to actually understand reviews on the internet and trying to process that information to something uh, that's actually well very clear for people. Hey, I can go here with these and these conditions. But on the other side, if we have like these 3D scans of the city, we can actually turn that information into a step count and uh, the width of the door, and we can actually distribute that information. So I think like uh, that's the combination how it's going. So so we see an issue in society and we see the new technology uh, that is rapidly developing. And we actually try to bring that together in a way that it's most positive for the people in the in the city. Great. So I hope that answers your question. I, it yeah. does. It Sorry, it does indeed. And um, I've just been given the time check. So I'm going to call in Petra now um, to show all of you, my guests, how she has understood our discussion. I think you'll be quite amazed by it. It's, it's a, a, a wonderful process. Petra, over to you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody. Um, it's all in black and white for now. Um, I will color it up later. We will send you the pictures. Uh, yeah, Cities for All, um, made possible by artificial intelligence. Um, how do you draw AI? I used a robot. I know it's something different. Um, but how, how does it happen? How does it work? First of all, I heard there are two target groups we are looking for. First of all, of course, the citizens. And then second, civil servants. So the citizens who need accessibility and um, a city for all, and civil servants who make it possible and who need to know how to do it. Um, one of the drivers, uh, you asked for some of the drivers for innovation, oh. I picked up one of them. For instance, the 3D scanning possibility. I guess it's using a satellite, making sure that as a wheelchair user, I get the information on how much space I have somewhere on the street or entering a restaurant. That was one of the examples. Um, and there are several things you're looking at. I picked up two of the three. <laughs> um, it's venue accessibility, meaning how, as a wheelchair user, using that example, how do I know if I can really enter the restaurant? So I can use AI, but I can also call, and I think the combination of the two makes uh, things accessible. And the user comes first, and then comes technology. So I think that's in this people business that we are in, that's probably the driving force. Still looking at the robot stuff. <laughs> okay. Bye to you <laughs> from Vienna. Great. Petra, thank you very much. All three of you, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That was a really good, short, sharp, clear, precise, and really fascinating look at um, AI in this context and AI in Amsterdam. Um, from Vienna, may I wish you a really great afternoon and thanks once again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.